Everyone's bought particle board furniture at some point, whether it's for a dorm room or maybe for your first house, but it comes to a point where you're ready to upgrade to nicer furniture. But then sometimes your budget still doesn't allow for that nice furniture. So today we're gonna upgrade this bookcase that's in pretty good shape with some molding and furniture feet, really make it look a lot nicer. So the first thing we're gonna need is our bookcase. We're also going to need a tape measure, trim molding, a miter saw, a finishing nail gun, a drill driver with drill bit, furniture feet, putty or lightweight spackling, spray paint, some fun fabric, a pair of scissors, and to hold our molding in place, we're using double-sided adhesive. Do you know the difference between a bookcase and a bookshelf? Well, in a shelf, that would be more on the wall, right? Yeah, that makes sense. And this is like enclosed. Yeah, so it's like a case. So let's call this a bookcase. Sounds good. But our first step to upgrade this is to get some molding for the sides. Okay. So we'll go ahead and take the measurements. And cool. if you can write those down, then yeah. we can go outside and make our cuts. Awesome. For this particular bookcase, those measurements are 11 and a half inches wide by 40 and 3 eighths inches tall. So the blade is an eighth of an inch thick. Uh -huh. So when you're lining it up, you want it to be on the opposite side of your mark so that you retain the exact measurement for the piece that you're cutting. You think you can handle it? I get to do it. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm ready. A power saw this size can be pretty intimidating for a first time user. So I'm letting Allison warm up by cutting a test piece first. I'm kind of scared. Oh. oh boy, you're, you're scaring me. You don't want it to be touching the molding when you pull the trigger. Woo. Hey, I did it. I mean, I guess that's pretty good. Did it Just right? kidding. No, it's oh. fine. <laughs> All right, now that you have your practice with the straight cuts, yeah. I'm going to mix it up with some angles. Oh, okay, cool. So we're basically making a picture frame. All right. So we need 45 degree cuts. What really makes a miter saw useful is the ability to make perfect, precise, angled cuts. In this case, since we're essentially creating a picture frame, all of our cuts will be at 45 degree angles. All right, we got it figured out, so now we just have six more to do. All right, great. So, Allison, do you have these little plugs on your side, too? I do, yep. I got four of them. Particle board furniture typically comes with these little things, which cover exposed screw heads. In this case, they're also in the way of our molding, so we're removing them. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay it out. See what we got. This composite trim sometimes has a tendency to round up, like this, instead of lying flat. So we're going to use these advanced strength glue dots to hold the trim down and in place as we nail it. These are especially handy if you're working alone on a project like this and could really use a second set of hands. All right, All right. go ahead and flush that on yeah. that corner. All right, sweet. That work? Yeah, nice. And corrects the little bend we had in yeah. there. Yeah, these work really well to hold it down. You don't have to worry about holding yeah, it less, exactly where it mm -hmm. needs to be. Exactly. I love when the, the corners match up. Yeah, it's so beautiful. This already looks better, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, you ready to nail this puppy? Yeah. More right. power tools? <laughs> Absolutely. The glue dots are doing the majority of the work here, holding our trim in place. So we only need to finish securing it with a couple of finished nails per board. All right, do I get a turn? <laughs> you can do the rest. Okay. Right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. And push it down and pull the trigger? Yes. Did I do it? Uh, yes. All right. I hope you've got the hang of it by now because we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the bookcase. What do you think about the molding? I think it looks great. It really adds to it. Yeah, I think it, it definitely dresses it up, but I think yeah. what will really make it look nicer is some furniture feet. Oh, good idea. So I got some smaller ones since it's not a very large piece. Mm -hmm. So where about do you think we should put them? Here, right? Yeah. Maybe down just a little bit. Back a little bit, but not much. Maybe yeah. Half inch. What do you think about that? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So let's just mark that and we'll get the measurement and we can do that on all four sides. We're making a mark at half an inch across and seven eighths inches down from each corner of the bottom side of the bookcase. The diameter of the drill bit needs to be slightly smaller than the diameter of the furniture feet screws. This will ensure that it fits tight. To make the connection even stronger, add a little glue where the feet meet the bookcase. We're almost ready for paint, but first we need to remove any hardware like these shelf pegs and also fill all of the seams and nail holes. 
All right, let's get this bad boy painted. All right, let's do it. All right, so let's spray paint the underside and the furniture feet. Okay. Let it dry for a little bit, and then we'll flip mm -hmm. it over and spray the sides and the inside. All right, sounds good. All right, and I'm sorry, but I get them, since I'm painting for two, I get the big <laughs> Mac yeah, Daddy respirator. Safety first, right? <laughs> After a quick wipe down, we're ready to paint this bookcase. <laughs> Just as soon as we get Allison's mask fixed. Does my hair look odd? <laughs> Why are these things always so tricky to put on? Let's go get some bricks and set the feet on top of the bricks, and then we can go ahead and flip it over. We don't have to wait for it to dry. Okay, perfect. When using spray cans, always apply a multiple thin coats. It's tempting to try and cover everything in one application, but you'll almost always end up with ugly paint runs and uneven coverage. Overspray can sometimes get out of hand, so it's important to paint in a well-ventilated area. I prefer painting outside, over a drop cloth, and under a tent. Once everything is dry, we remove the back panel so we can shift back inside to cover it with fabric. And we spray this just enough mm -hmm. so that the dark color doesn't show through our light colored fabric. That's a good idea. So okay. it's dry enough that All we right. can get to work. So we'll use these. Ooh, glue dots again. Yeah. Now we're switching to our glue squares applicator. These are ideal for fabric because they provide a seamless, smooth bond and help keep everything tight. Take the fabric and put it in one corner okay. and spread out the excess and then we only have to cut the excess All right. from two sides. So I'm gonna put this corner. Yeah. We're setting the fabric down on one corner, leaving no excess. And how's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Then pressing right. it onto the glue squares. Yay. All right, that's as far as my arm goes. <laughs> <laughs> Once the first side is down, we Make pull sure the fabric tight know. across the opposite it's end while smoothing down. the wrinkles out. All right. Next, we trim the excess. Fun little fabric. Mm -hmm. I know, I like it. It's kind of playful. Yeah, still. The birds are fun. So, you know, this used to be Brandon's bookcase. He brought about three things into our marriage. Oh, really? And I made him get rid of it, <laughs> and now I'm girlifying it and giving yeah. it away. So, I don't know if he'll be sad or uh, glad about that. Well, I know that it's going to look great in my daughter's room. She, um, she needs a new bookshelf. We, have my brother's old bookshelf uh -huh. that um, a lamp fell on it at one point oh, and no. kind of burned a hole in oh, it. Oh my gosh! So we painted over that and it's a little too tall for her she's uh, four, okay. so this one will be like the perfect height oh, good. for her to get her books and whatever else she puts on there. Going to a good home. It is. It's all you ask we'll of your furniture <laughs> yeah. when it moves on. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to attach it. We'll use our nail gun again and attach it back. Yay! Our birds. Okay. Yep, they're the right one. <laughs> Making sure they're not yeah. bats they don't hanging upside, upside down. down. I want the back panel to stay on tight and secure, so we're nailing it in place every four or five inches. I do like using the nail gun. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> my finger was like a foot away. <laughs> Let me hand it That's off funny. to you now. <laughs> Classic dad joke. It works. <laughs> Can't wait for you to get it home and put the shelves in and see what it looks like in Jillian's room. I know, she's gonna love it. She's gonna have fun putting stuff in and decorating it. She, she's gonna be so excited. Aw, good. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Now I have to put my books. You put your books in there? You have to help me. It looks like Jillian's having as much fun decorating this bookcase as we had putting it together. If you've updated a piece of furniture like this, I'd love to hear about it. Comment below and let me know. Thanks for checking in. I've got so many projects to share with you, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next episode.